to the show today. Today we're going to talk with my brother, uh, Coach Dave DeVelder, who has been teaching for 17 years and is also, as I mentioned, uh, a coach and very involved with athletics since we were children. Um, we're going to have him back to talk about sports. Today we're going to talk about education in the time of COVID. So welcome to the show, Dave. Thanks for coming. Thanks for inviting me on, Sister Rebecca. Well, you know, it's Dr. Rebecca and friends because uh, I wanted to make sure all my friends got to come on and talk about things that are important to them and other people. So, Sister, sister Dr. Rebecca. Oh, there you go. All right. Dr. Sister Rebecca? You know, my friend, my friend Elizabeth calls me Dr. Bex. So there you go. Dr. Sister Beck. Anyway, moving on. So, uh, Dave... Uh, tell me about what's happening in your school district right now. Is the vaccination process changing uh, the policies or anything? Like what's happening? So um, we we just got cleared in New Jersey to for teachers to get vaccinated. Our governor had said the 15th of March, but I guess uh, the president pushed it up to immediately. Um, my two colleagues that I've been working with since September 4th in the building, we've had kids since September 4th because we are the special needs teachers. Um They've both been vaccinated. I have yet to be vaccinated, but, um, you know, the vaccines uh, are available. You have to really, it's a rat race though. It's not, not the easiest thing to get. Uh, my wife is supposed to be putting me on the list soon and our mother has been bothering me to get it. Um, my issue with getting it is in my head because I don't like that something is called warp speed. You know, to me, if anybody came up to me and said, would you like to try some warp speed? I would say, no, thanks. I'm good on warp speed. So uh, but other than that, there's a lot of teachers that are, are, are trying to get it. Um, you know, I heard the, the second day you'll need a day off. I know uh, our guidance counselor um, uh, intern, she just got it. She was out today because she's young, but she was not. She was not well today. Uh, when I emailed, the, they said that she was out. So, um, yeah, so people are getting vaccines. Uh, it should help the teachers, uh, peace of mind. Uh, some of them are very afraid. Uh, I can tell you a story about that in a little bit, but yeah, okay. go for your next uh, round of things to talk about. And I, I'll go, I'll get into the, that story in a little bit. Well, we, um, you know, we're, we're not doing any episodes on vaccines, but that's interesting um, from the perspective that some communities, some states, right, have prioritized teachers. Other states are not prioritizing teachers and, and how the states do that. Um, so your your friend who's afraid, um, you know, let's talk about that. So there's a lot of parents who are afraid. Like I said in my opening monologue, um, you know, the people in New York were talking about this generation being lost. Kids are confused. They're not seeing their friends. All sorts of problems going on right now. Um, you know, let's talk about that a little bit. Like, what do you what do you see in your community? What what do you think about the policies? Also, <clears throat> it's interesting because a lot of you know teacher haters. A lot of teacher haters, especially in our state, where uh, you know they don't like uh, some of our benefits. And our governor, our former governor, really did not like us at all. Um, you know, they blame teachers for the schools not opening. But then there's some towns like uh, say South Brunswick, New Jersey where they invited the kids back and only 25% of the kids came back. So that's really the parents that are afraid not sending their kid back. Some schools policies are interesting though. Though, If you didn't send um, your kid marking period one or two, then when they allowed kids back marking period three, they did not let you, or you can't flip flop. You can't say, send your kid back and then pull them back out and then put them back in. Like you must make that decision. So that's that's been some school policies. My school doesn't have that policy uh, uh, that you can we can flip flop in my district, which the teachers aren't aren't happy about. Another issue we have is now the virtual school is used as a crutch. So say your your child doesn't want to get up today, right? Say one of your kids, right? That's in school, and you you email me, hey Mr. D, Tristan doesn't want to. Tristan woke up late. We're going to we're going to use him as a virtual today as a teacher. I just don't have a switch that like takes my lessons that I have the kids in person and puts them into virtual. So parents are using it as a crutch to get credit for the day, even though at the last minute you're telling me you're not going to be in school and I have to provide for you on the screen, which is not easy to do. So that's been an issue. Um, but, you know, back to the scared teacher, um, you know, 
some of these people are in such fear that, that uh, you know, there's this one teacher. I, she's been in all year. She's been a good trooper. But when I see her in the hallway, she's kind of like very coward, like, you know, very scared looking. And uh, I hadn't talked to her almost all year. And then I heard her talk and her voice was cracking like she was crying. And uh, talking to another teacher, and I'm like, "Wow, this woman is as scared as she, as she looks." And uh, you know, she, she uh, the the amount of fear that she carries is probably worse for her than the virus, in my opinion. Like, you know, just every day to be that afraid of what you're doing. So, how are you? Like, how are you feeling? Like, what do you? What's your sense? Do you think these policies are working, or they need to be improved? Other than the whole crutch thing, which I think is as much to do with parenting as it is the school district. Um, I was, we, when, we, when New Jersey, when our county went to a level orange, um, the, the policy changed where it was a close contact. You had to quarantine as opposed to, you know, actually, uh, testing positive for it. And that was a little bit nerve wracking because if I was too close to a kid and he showed, <coughs> excuse me, he showed, <coughs> uh, don't he showed, bring COVID to my show. No COVID today. He showed, he showed a couple symptoms, um, Say a kid shows a couple symptoms and I was near him. They're going to call me and say, were you within his range of six feet for 15 minutes or, 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 or more? And I don't really get in anybody's range for that amount of time. So it's very hard for me to judge if, if, if I'm in that kind of range. So to me, that's a little nerve wracking of, of a policy and uh, not making me feel as safe as, as I was feeling when we were in the yellow category. We we're in the yellow category. I felt quite safe. Um, in, in the building, I didn't feel, you know, not safe. Um, last week though, we brought our kids back, all kids four days a week. And, uh, she's still there. There you are. I couldn't tell if you were there. Back. So, so Dr. Sister Rebecca. So we brought the kids back in, uh, uh, four days a week and the building is crowded. Um, more crowded. The kids are not six feet apart, but they have little carousels around them that are clear. So you almost feel like you're in like a Chinese school if you ever, you know when you see pictures of China and you feel like you're in that now. Um, but the kids are actually a bit nerve wracked, even though from what I hear, I mean you're the doctor, but uh, that under fourteen year olds don't really, you know, there's not a lot of risk. And our school's only K eight, so you know our our eighth graders that are fifteen, you know, are maybe in the more range of what of, of what happened to me or you. But below that, I heard that they're not that at risk, more than the staff. I mean, I err on the more conservative side. I never bought into that. Um, but then again, you know, I didn't do a medical doctorate. I did a doctorate of health science. So maybe the researchers know more than we do. But um, I, I think that everybody should, you know, take precaution because a lot of times you can be an asymptomatic carrier. So, you know, what are they basing this on that, that under 14? You know, it's really difficult to do clinical trials with kids. And I could bore you with a lot of discussion about that, but I won't. Um, and and so I I kind of challenge those theories, but I've heard that. And then of course you've got the high schools and the colleges, right? Where you you have you know a lot more close quarters, um, a lot of times. Yeah, and college kids don't care; they have no fear. I mean, college kids are you, at twenty one. You don't have any thought of of repercussions. So you know, I'm not. I don't think they they care at all about the pandemic. Um, so yeah. So what do you think is uh, going to happen next year for the schools? So our school, um, I know that they were trying to give options that maybe like on the Wednesday that I think eventually if, if we still trend in the same direction. And again, I'm in, I'm more West than say uh, some of the other teachers in New Jersey. So we're a bit more rural. Um, they might bring us back Wednesday and we'll finish the year out five days a week. They did, you know, for our next episode, they did, just approved sports in my district for the spring. Um, but I believe, I believe by, by the fall, my school will return to a uh, full day and, and five days a week uh, come fall. I believe that, that that's just my, my thought. Um, and again, the numbers were trending that way around here. When we, when we came back four days a week, we were clearly back in the yellow and uh, they started to move in that direction. So I think we'll be back five days a week. Um, Come, come September. What do you want to say to the to the parents that are you know watching this, or maybe the students that are watching this? You know, what, what what's your final thoughts to them? 
Um, you know that you know to be cautious. Like you know, I have to tell kids a lot, especially in our program. We have thirteen kids. Yeah, you know, to 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 move back. I would tell the parents to not to not put your politics on your kids and not not uh, not because a kid a kid will show uh, less respect. Uh, like, you know, so say a parent says, you know, masks, I had a kid, you know, his dad said masks actually make you get COVID. And, uh, you know, now the kid, we have to tell him to wear his mask because that's the policy of, of what's going on, right? For you to attend school. But like, you know, you're, you're giving a 12 year old your politics that you think it's, this is fake and this is like garbage. Now this kid respects it even less. Right. So I would say, keep your politics out of them. Just say, we have to do this until, until further notice. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, let's not let's not be pigheaded. It's like you have to respect any virus or disease. You have to respect any any uh, any substance. You know, respect you know what you're putting in your body as food. And you you know you can't just uh, brush off this and say it's not real. It is real, but you, but you know if you respect it, you can kind of be safe. So have respect for it and and, and keep yourself safe. Keep your distance. Um, one of my colleagues who's a, a teacher's aide. That was, he's about 60 years old. Um, he got it. He came back because they told him he could come back. And he was out for 18 days. Um, again, I'm not a, uh, a per, I'm not a medical guy like, like you either. And, uh, you know, he got a little close to me. And I wasn't trying to be disrespectful to him. But he's a cl close walker. You know, he likes to get close. And he was like, it, within my six-foot range. And I was just like, hey, you're a little too close to me, bud. You know, like, you need to take a step back. I think he was a little offended. I don't normally do that to him, but I know he had it. And I don't trust that, you know, 14 days, he's not, you know, contagious. I know they say that, but that's not something that I, I you know, I'm not going to risk it. I don't need to risk that. Just stay back two more feet, buddy. So I don't have to breathe in your, 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 your air. You know what I mean? So, you know, respect it, you know, try to follow these rules. Wearing a mask is not that big a deal that, you know, the anti-maskers you want to talk Talk trash, like just wear it till 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 we get this under control, and we we'll, we'll move back on to 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 our normal living. I've decided to like you know get some pretty masks. So um, like I was showing you, this is one of my masks, and I told you this is this is Puff the Magic Dragon here. You know, for our Chinese New Year, I got a, like I got a bunch of uh, fancy um, fashionable masks because I decided that I wanted to have fun with it because you know why. Why not? Like, you know, here's here's one of my masks too, my, my Hamza mask, you know, because, and this one actually has a filter and a seal. It's, it's kind of fancy. Um, and I decided to do that because, you know, I think that we should have some fun with it while we're here. You know, it gives it an opportunity to really have some originality to it, you know? I do draw one line though, Dr. Sister Rebecca. I, my mask will not wear a mask. So we got some double maskers. I'm not gonna make fun of you for okay. double masks. So but here's the my mask is not wearing a mask. But I'm not. I'm not double masking. Not triple masking. I know people that do. I get. I'm not gonna make fun of them. But my so mask this, don't wear a mask. This double masking and triple masking. Um, that actually, like, we might talk about that in a future episode. Um, I've got a colleague coming on to talk about. We're gonna do some myth busting. Um, so the double masking, like that came from, somebody asked Dr. Fauci, why would somebody want to wear two masks? He wasn't recommending wear two masks. He said, well, here's the science behind it. And it got translated into, oh, the CDC says wear two masks. So now people will do that. I, I'm with you. I'm not going to wear two masks. You know, I do have an N95, uh, a KN95 for certain situations. Otherwise, I've got my fashion masks, you know, but you know, I don't like people in my space anyway. Um, you know, our, our, our mother is much more social. Like, I don't like people hugging me and touching me and all that. You know, I'm not a fan of that. Oh, she hasn't been doing that. She barely leaves the house. I, and, she's, and she's vaccinated now. I know. She called to tell me. She, yeah. she called to tell I'm me. Sending and, you know, down, I'm sending her down to Florida. She can't believe that I uh, don't wear a mask when I stand in the backyard. And I always tell her, I go, Mom, COVID is not going to come sneak up on me in the backyard, okay? Nobody's in my backyard to come and get me with the COVID. Um, yeah. You know, but, you were, but when, you were, when you were talking about wearing a mask giving you COVID, like, that cracked me up because that reminded me of this story I heard. And I actually, like, went and Googled it and I read about it on Facebook. So there was this woman who 
Um, her husband came home from a business trip and said he got chlamydia from his face mask. And nice. she went online and told everybody that you can't wear a face mask because you'll get chlamydia. And my, my people on the internet were like telling her, like, yeah, no. And like, like my friends that work in public health, like we were all talking about this one day, and like the epidemiologists were just cracking up. And she believed that she believed the guy, obviously, you know. That's that's, that's very nice of her. I know it's very nice of her. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes on the internet to uh you know to attack mask wearing which was like uh yeah. you know hilarious and scary at the same time I, I think, a dirty um, mask, you know that's right you don't want to wear a dirty mask you know yeah. um so i what do you think like i mean because you have a daughter so like what do you tell your daughter about you know being safe at school like what do you what do you what do you do with her for the for the yeah, mask, you know, so. we don't preach our politics on ours. Wear your mask, and and hopefully, it'll get in people's faces. And uh, you know, we we sent her when she was allowed to go two days a week. We sent her, and now she goes four days a week. And we tried to get her to go to four days a week a long time ago. Um, so she's she's been fine. Uh, she doesn't. She's not living in in fear, and she's she's going about her 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 regular school as as normal as she can. And uh, you know, no 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 issue. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is, you know, if you, you know, filtering the correct information and keeping yourself safe when some people are in panic mode from what they see and, and, uh, and that's not healthy for you. You know, it's not good for you to be panicked for your, for your, uh, you know, for you to be at that level of fear is bad for your body. And I think a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, are in that state right now and they're, we're going to see bad health things. So, yep. I, I agree. And I think we already are seeing a lot of bad health stuff. And I, I think it's very unfortunate. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of that on some of the other episodes, because I wanted to address some of what I'm seeing through the show. Um, and I really want to thank you for taking the time to uh, come on and uh, chat with me um, about all of these things related to the school and school closings and school openings and um, virtual school in person school what kinds of decisions need to be made go ahead yep. and we're going to see uh soon it's gonna be interesting we are going to probably have standardized testing in new jersey we're going to see how how these districts compare with a school that's been in two days a week and two days virtual to a, a school like newark that's been virtual the whole time and then the smaller districts that have been in person the whole time maybe it'll break down like how these educations have been delivered so very interesting on the on the education front right there of how things are going to break down in a standardized mode when you start to look at which how 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 the instruction has been delivered right so it's going to be interesting um you know definitely uh you know uh numbers to look at later and this generation you know we'll look to see if there's gaps in their education due to this and if there's uh health problems because of it so we'll see you know, thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. We'll, we'll do a sports episode, and uh, sports returns April 12th to my district. So uh, right after the episode is filmed, we'll, we'll be back out there playing some baseball. Probably can't spit sunflower seeds, though, Dr. Rebecca's sister. Uh, well, you know, but you and Andrew can get out on the field. So, you know, that's good because, you know, I, I know a lot of different athletes, and we have those conversations. And, uh, again, that's going to be the topic for uh, the next time we have you back. But, uh you know, I think it's going to be super exciting to see what develops going forward and um, how COVID has changed our lives, some for the worse and some for the better. And I'm, I'm really excited that you took time out of your day to come hang with me. That's right. <laughs>